such a smile on my face as well. <laughs> Seeing him waiting in the YouTube chat. It's nice to see you, Calvin. Um, just making sure that we are indeed live. We should be. Let us check. Let us check and we're live. <laughs> so awesome to be here. So I think there were two topics I could choose between today. Both contained minor pieces. I think one had to do with bishops and, and knights, one being a good bishop or like a bad bishop and a good knight and so on. And that would have, I think, provoked more positional ideas, which I, I don't know if I'm fully comfortable with that yet. Probably have to do a lot of studying myself. But like I, I always say with these lessons is I try to put in some preparation. And with that preparation, I also tend to work on my own chest at the same time. So two birds, one stone, but no birds were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> so nice to see you. Even say anything this time, so no way I can... Yeah, so I'm live. And since I'm live, it means that eccentric, you were indeed the reason why we were not going live on time before. But here we are. Here we are, Glamdring. Good to see you. Long time no see, guys. I was definitely not live this morning at all. <laughs> this is the first time today that I'm live. <laughs> so nice to see you. Yeah, so today we will be talking about bishops and uh, in particular, more specifically, the bishop pair. And why is the bishop pair so important? Um, I will show you the value of bishops and why trading uh, bishops for knights are either good or bad for you in certain positions. What I'd love to start with, of course, are tactics. I have five tactics that I chose um, with a supposed theme of bishop pair, and we'll go from there. I think it starts with easy, you'll find some easy ones in the mix, and then maybe one or two difficult ones that will require a little bit of calculation. Another thing you need to know about bishop pairs, guys, is that usually in an open game where there are very few pieces, and that usually happens in the end game, or even leading from middle game to end game, you'll find that bishops are stronger. Bishops have a longer range, and when there is a lot of open fields, the bishop can run freely from one end to the other in one move. But if you were to place a knight in the same situation, it would take four moves from the for the knight to get from one side of the board to the other. So, in saying that, I would assume, or I should hope you will assume too, that bishops are slightly better. Unless, of course, you aim on having some kind of big middle game attack with your knights, I would say keep your bishops over knights, usually. I do like bishops acting like a pair of... Alrighty. It's <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah, so nice to, to see you two in the chat. Lovely, lovely. Alright, so let's get started, guys. Um, this is the position that we will be starting with. I think you can see what I see, right? And it'll be white to move in this particular position and we're going to warm you up. Later on, we're going to take a look at some games that I've handpicked. One of them has a specific annotation that I found intriguing. I opened up the game. I saw that there were comments and comments by the player himself. And the player was Alexander Alekhine, which I'm hoping is Alexander Alekhine, because the game was played in 1936 against some Alexander. Let me just double check. But I have my facts straight. Right. Uh, Alexander Alekhine versus Connell Hugh Donnell or Donnell Alexander. So two Alexanders playing against each other, one with the first name Alexander, one with the last name Alexander. I just wanted to make sure. Hugh Alexander. Hugh R. Alexander. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on with life. So here we have it. It is white to move. And uh, yeah, the stage is handed over to you. Hey, screws. Just so, because uh, of the sabos. How's it going, screws? How you doing? <laughs> Look at that c8 bishop. Stop highlighting the c8 bishop. I saw your comment in Discord and I disapprove. Um, today we will not be talking about the c8 bishop, but rather the power of the bishops. 
than the struggle. I also saw the clip of Danny Wrench and Hammer in commentary where Danny was referring to two doors, one leading to the French defense and one leading to happiness and that he accidentally chose happiness. And Hammer was like dead silent saying, well, I played the French defense as a kid and I quite enjoyed it and I want some good games and uh, that's all we need to know. <laughs> did they what? Become Ale did they get married? Become Alexander Alexander? I mean, imagine you track someone down with the same last name as your first name just to get married to them so you can call yourself Screws Screws or Glamdry Glamdring. A Jesse Jesse. T. Good to see you guys. Wolfgang Hartman, you have the same first name as one of my favorite authors, Wolfgang Ullman. Good to see you, Rudra. Alakine is a tactical wizard. So far we're having Rook. Okay, that's that's a good move. That's a good move. So we should be eight. Yep. Not even perhaps you're hitting the nail on the head there, uh, giant pixels. Oh, did I mention <laughs> Good job, good job, screws. Nice. Very, very nice. That was a good one. Nightmare 50, Nightmares 56. Where were you during the Halloween event? Fastest game ever. I can't click on the link right now. What am I looking at? Mm hmm. Alrighty. So that's the move. Rook d1. This is too easy for you guys because the king is forced to c7. And of course, as you have guessed it, bishop d8 ends the game there with a beautiful checkmate on d8. So let's move on to the next one. We don't want to waste too much time. And here we have black to move. Black to move. Let's go ahead, guys. I think I need to see for myself what the move was as well. Right, there are two problems you have to identify here. Two different tactics. Checkers. The chessboard is still around. What? <laughs> Solve the puzzle. Yeah, well, why are you pretending like it's the first time you've solved a puzzle? That's not true, Giant Pixels. You missed the bishop d8? Well, giant pixels, you can say this much. Glamdring is a high 1800. Eccentric horse. Were you able to guess the identity of the players during the Halloween event? Um, I wasn't able to guess my opponent. I knew the country they were from when I started playing them because the name tag had the Indian flag next to it. So I thought it would, was Setu, but it ended up being Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna with the Mr. Pumpkinhead or whatever his name was. Um, if so, how many? I was able to guess Peter Fiddler, and I think Peter Hengelson was pretty obvious as well, just the angle at which he was sitting. <laughs> well, I mean, screws, some people wear such a great facade, it's hard to call their bluff. I mean, I was calling his bluff, so anyway. Move 21. So on the tag of this game, move 21 is supposed to be a problem of the Alexander game that we will take a look at. But have you guys solved this yet? Good. Some people in the YouTube chat have got it. Great move. Great move. Unfortunately, um, if we put the bishop on f4 right now, then the knight will just capture. <laughs> recognizing players from the angle at which they sit. I mean, if you're seeing, if you've seen them before, then it's easy to identify a player. <laughs> Plonking a bishop on f4 would be nice. If we could tease the knight away, 
Interesting, interesting. It's a very nice way of putting it. Excuse me, screws. Excuse you. I didn't know screws could be so nasty. Oh, YouTube, okay. I mean, we technically don't either. He's hiding right now. As you can see, I have a plant behind me. He's actually a grandmaster who whispers in my ear. <laughs> bishop f5. If we move the bishop to f5, then it would be check, unfortunately. Oh yeah, I also guessed Kostya, but I don't know how I knew it was Kostya, to be honest with you. You were not playing in the event? Sure, 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 sure. You know what struck me the most, um, or I don't know, struck me blind almost, is eccentric horse. You were busy playing in the ulti box, no way event, and at the same time we're in the chat. So that, that made me the most confused, you know. But then you said you were geary and it was okay. A good chess player follows the rules. A great chess player rewrites the rules. Well, we got to start it good and then move on. So I like the YouTube chats you guys mentioned and also Glamdring mentioned King F7. And the whole point of King F7, of course, is to make sure that we keep this threat alive of checkmate because the pawn is covering on G5. And we can just go ahead with... Oh my goodness, I couldn't stop that one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I took a, a small little nap before the stream. All right, rook h3 checkmate is what we're aiming towards. And if in the case of rook h1, what does black play in this position? What does black play after rook h1? The other chat is the Twitch chat. So if you go coaches. Uh, twitch.tv uh, forward slash coaches is where you're going to find the other chat. I would recommend giving coaches Twitch a follow if you haven't already. You'll be notified of all the lessons um, that we give on coaches as they happen. I like it. Nice. Good job. Um, maybe there's something better. I, mean, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Bishop f8, but if bishop f8, king h5, what happens? King h5, hmm. Interesting. I like that a little bit more, actually. Rook g8 looks interesting as well. Rook g8, maybe. <laughs> We should be using bishops. I mean, they're existing right now on the board. Um, yeah, but I, I like what you're saying here. Uh, rook g8 is one I was looking at as well. I like rook g8. It's supposed to be maiden 4 here because we're threatening rook h8. And now the king would most naturally go to h7. Then we can just check with the bishop. King has to go back and we get our checkmate like this. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. And we're on number three out of five puzzles until we get to the glorious games. Glorious games. I like this position. I was wanting to take the A1 rook. Ah, uh, the H1 rook. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes checkmate is better than winning material. Sometimes. Only sometimes. Whose turn is it? It's black to move in this position. Scott. Mm-hmm. It does seem good. It does seem good, although there will be bishop h3 after that. Queen h8, bishop h3. No problem, Scott. Everyone's saying Queen H8. 
I only learned chess 37 years ago. You can't expect me to get the A1 and H1 right yet. Sorry, is it year 38 that you're expected to get it right? I'm not too sure. Not too sure. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Some people are getting it now. Good job. Good job. Good job. Remember, you want to use your bishops. If you go bishop f2, I think there'll be a series of checks. We have to watch out for. So maybe we want to play something a little bit more forceful on the first move. Eccentric horse. It's just too... Con oh my goodness. Alrighty, you're too convinced, but okay. We we're not gonna take we're not gonna take that away from you. Oh well. Yes, Cruz has got it. I mean, nice, 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 nice. Beautiful stuff, beautiful. And now all of you are getting it. I also like this one a lot. We're using our bishop pair over here, and even though we're in exchange down, things are looking really good for us. So bishop g1, and now if king h3, we have queen h8 mate. And if king takes g1, we have queen takes g3. Beautiful stuff. And this is the only move that white has, but since we have a bishop, on that diagonal, we can simply play queen takes g2 checkmate. Lovely. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Good evening, Cappy. All right, white to move in this position, guys. White to move. Am I being bishop -y? I don't even know what being bishop -y is, but thank you. Next problem, please. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wait, this is not white to move. It's black to move. Sorry, but it's black to move. Let me just flip the board. Here we go. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. We don't have the bishop pair. Next problem, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you need to send a selfie eccentric horse. That's how it works. I was going to say this is the next level stuff, but we are playing against the bishop here. <laughs> bishop e5 looks too obvious. Bishop e5? Yeah, it's not bishop e5. I can promise you that much. <laughs> it's not bishop e5. Because remember, what do we want? Do we want material in a position like this where we're down in so much material that we'll have to find like 50 tactics in order to get everything back? Or are we going to attack the exposed king? That is our focus. So usually, once again, when it comes to tactics, we have a few things we need to focus on. Number one. Well, number one branches into three different things, right? Forceful moves. And those are your checks first, then your captures and then your threats, your attacking moves. These are the three things we need to focus on. And beyond that, it's always about improving your pieces. So if a tactic looks like it might work if your opponent doesn't play correctly, then usually it's not a good idea to go for it if it's going to compromise your position, right? We wanna make sure that you end up with a decent position even after the tactic is conducted. And if they're able to dodge the tactic, if the tactic either uh, works or doesn't work, if you're left with a good position, then that's good. But if it means you have to give up your position or some pieces where it doesn't work at all and maybe your opponent will fall for it, then it's never a good idea to do that. You have to assume that your opponent is strong. Very strong. Matt, good to see you. Matt Buck, one, two, three. What's happening here? We're doing some tactics together. Black to move in this position. We're a queen down. All we have compensation for the queen is a bishop. But since the bishop here is so strong, strong, we can do anything. It's stonksy diagonal, which a bishop to dream of though. Mm. 
bishop f4, king d1. Okay, if bishop f4, king will for sure go to... Ah, oh, it has to go to d1. Good stuff. I didn't even know that. But then I think screws is a secret GM, to be honest. And as the queen takes the rook, we have the bishop pair versus rook and a knight. And we are really bad. Are we really better then? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Wish before king can only go to d1, then what? JRQ! What's up, JRQ? Bishop here is awesome though. Isn't that what we're here to learn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So important. So important. Alrighty, so the first move is correct. We have bishop f4. Then we have king d1. What happens now? What happens now? The engine took a bit of a thing, right? Took a bit of a dip. So the engine went advantage for white, advantage for black, advantage for white, and then it went all the way up. Advantage for black. We have played in the past. Yep, that's true. Shh. Magsy, I'm trying to stay incognito. <laughs> oh man, you guys are hilarious. Uh, bishop g4 nice i love it and then we have king c2 king king to c2 now what mm, calvin uh, though it would be white to move oh the knight and rook stole the song stonksy diagonal <laughs> then I'm like, i like that you're using stonksy it's good it's good for your for your health you would think that rook c8 works but unfortunately it does not work because i think um there's some stuff that white can do here yes very good Rookie two, nice giant pixels. Then king b3. King the b3. <laughs> trying to think. What the continuation was. <laughs> now pawn can help deliver mate. Well, I forgot the move. Shh, don't tell anyone that I, that I peeked. I did peek though. Yes, exactly. It's exactly what I was thinking, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> and then we have this move. And now what? You must get it right. If we play bishop d6, then, yeah, it is bishop. Yeah, very good, very good. Then what was the other move that there was? This. Yeah, very nice. Okay, bishop d6. So bishop d6 is the move here. And then if king here, what do you play? Good job, good job. Hello, Polka. Good to see you. The same? Do you play the same? Yes, you do. Hello. How's it going, Ov? Wait, Ov was here in the beginning. I'm com completely blind. Definitely didn't peek. She's just testing the engine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, a wild po polko appeared. All right, and the last tactic with us, guys. This time is white to move. And now I'm sure it's white to move. Don't you worry. Don't worry. There's some bishop. 
Hey, smart guy, smart guy. How you doing, smart guy? <laughs> then separate queen. I don't know. Depends on the position. Depends on the position, Polko. How was your day? Bishop a3 check is interesting. Hmm, Bishop a3 runs into maybe rook e7. Or king f7, I think is better. Not king f7. King e8. No, king f7. Mm hmm, king f7. Nice. Good job, giant pixels. Giant pixels is onto something. It was bad. Why did you miss Jackbox? Why did you miss it? Is the question. The queen is an all in one <laughs> bishop. <laughs> like I said, depends on the given position. Because of work. I noticed you were not there. How was the work? Work is the worst. GM pixels, even. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I am reading chat. Nice, good job. Marty's looking at the right thing right now. Arian, yes. What's happened to your voice? Are you a Transylvanian vampire? I am a vampire. What are you talking about? I am uh, the Dracula from, uh, from Hotel Transylvania. Can confirm work is the worst. <laughs> We have to get Jesse to stream at this time more often on hashtag chess so we don't have work. I'm sorry, but majority of the time when you guys are at work, I'm streaming. And when you guys are not at work, I'm working. <laughs> this is a work. This is a work. Queen g7, I love it. Queen g7 is a really good move. But then king e8 is being forced, right? And what happens? What happens after that? After that? Win the knight? Okay, we can take the knight, no problem. Good job, Magnus Carlsen. Then we have king d7. What happens then? I mean, if you get someone else to do your work for you, then you don't have work to do. That's like the quickest way. There's like stonksy strats. Grab a knight. The boat's about... Our bishop hair looks rather s subo. What? Sapao. I like how you add an even at the end when you make a typo. Nautical references. Queen f7 is interesting, but the rook will come back. Jericho. Bishop a3. Check. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Someone's got it in the YouTube chat. Good job. Good job. Mm, no, f. We're not simplifying. We're going to attack. Must go full force. Hey, I'm a day's burrito. What's up? You're finally awake. You're finally awake. How are those sleeping patterns? Feels bad, man. Sorry, Jericho. Hire Rebecca to do your co-chess work so you can stream a little stronger. Then, oh, okay. Alrighty. Alrighty, Polko. I see. You know what? You know what? It's okay. A better couch? Couch intended? I'm just gonna write my will up and then just call it uh, the end of time, I think. A better couch, clearly, on the couch. Ulan, how you doing, Ulan? How's it going? How's it going? Like throwing YouTube chat at us. <laughs> not, not, as, not as serious. Not as serious. Okay. Good job. Calvin has it. 
Bridger has it. Marty has it. Nice guys. I love it. Mm hmm. I'm a couch potato. I consider myself a couch potato too, but the thing is, you can't call someone else a couch. Only they can call themselves a couch. I do identify as a couch potato. And rook d5 is the answer. Rook d5 is the answer. And after bishop takes, we have queen takes. And after the king retreats, we just pick up the rook, no matter where the king goes. Which is amazing, because now we have two bishops versus a rook, and the opponent can just resign. You can use that um, flare tag of the tipped king. <laughs> yeah. This was underwhelming. Not overwhelming? Puzzles should end in me. I don't know. You see, not all movies end with a happy end. Well, finish with a happy end. Okay, wait. Let me let me just track back a little bit and rephrase what I'm saying. Some movies have a sequel, so you can't have a happy ending until you watch the next movie and then the next one and the next one. Some puzzles present you a position that is winning. It does not necessarily mean it's going to be checkmate in the next couple moves. It's just winning and the opponent can resign. There we go. <laughs> oh, you guys are the worst. You guys are the worst. I'm just going to, like I said, bury my head in a couch potato. <laughs> I'm going to just resign. I'm retiring forever. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, alrighty, moving forward with life. Here we have a brilliant game played by Alexander Alekhine versus Connell Hugh Alexander. Chess is like the Twilight movies. <laughs> I didn't say it was a saga. I said it could have a sequel. Chess um, positions could have a sequel. Chess tactics. We already did Alex v Alex. No, we haven't even gone through a game yet. I just spoke about it, Screws. I spoke about it. We don't. We didn't do a game. What did you... Did, did you come here for marbles? Oh, I was late. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What did eccentric horse say? Partially responsible for Twitch chat being less serious than YouTube chat. I don't know if that is a good thing or not. Um, yeah. No, don't say that, Jarek Hill. It's Jesse streaming. No one expects the chat stream to be si Alrighty. Alrighty. So, my favorite thing of this game is literally after the first move it says, Notes by Alekhine. So, let's begin. Al Alexander Alekhine played white pieces against Hugh Alexander. Who, who, who? Okay, so we have d4 on the board. Now, as much as we don't like d4, we really like Alekhine, so I think we can excuse this first move. Then we have knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, bishop b4, check. And already this is characterized as the Nimzo Indian defense. Knight b to d2. There are so many different ways of dealing with this opening. We have knight c3, we also have bishop d2, and uh, how to recapture is also a separate story. But we're not here to talk about uh, openings. So I'm going to read the annotations here by Alekhine. The usual move nowadays is bishop d2, right? Bishop d2. Nowadays, probably speaking about 1936. In order to develop the knight on a more natural square, c3. But on the other hand, if black wants to avoid the exchange of his king's bishop, king's bishop... Uh -huh, this is the king's bishop of black. I love this old notation. He will now be forced to lose time by retreating it to e7. The text move therefore cannot be condemned. It has an advantage, anyhow, of leading to more complicated lines than the usual move. It's so team Jacob. Same copy. Totally team Jacob. And that's got nothing to do with the shirtless scene. <laughs> Jackbox, since Polko missed out earlier. Oh, goodness. Hey, Tomiji. Yeah, maybe if you guys want, I'll go live on my troll account and we can play some Jackbox. 
<laughs> reached my peak in the match against my dad last week, being downhill from there. Oh, <gasps> you beat your dad at chess. That's amazing. I can also send you a book called How to Beat Your Dad at Chess if you want. I have so many different PDFs. If you have any kind of chess book that you're interested in getting, I have it on guard. <laughs> I could build a house with all the books that I have. A virtual house, of course. Are there no annotations translated from Russian? Alekhine was a Russian. I obviously knew that eccentric horse. Did I mention that my middle name was Jake? <laughs> <laughs> And what's your first name? <laughs> Please send. I will send it. Just remind me. I'm gonna forget. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Beat my dad at chess too. Though that ain't a big deal since he doesn't even know how castling works. But um, your dad is a 2000 rated player who plays in the Bundesliga. How is it that he can't even castle? You remind me on Discord, that's amazing. Great, great, great. Okay, so let's continue with the game after we've read that beautiful annotation by Alexander Alekhine. So we have b6 and g3, both trying to take over the long diagonal with their light squared bishop. So the Fianchetto has happened on the queen side for black and the king side for white. Let's continue. So we have castles, castles, and bishop takes d2. And again, there is a note that says... Dear Alexander, instead of this exchange, which yields white the advantage, the pair of bishops without necessity, black could play either d5, Rubenstein, Alekhine, Semmering. Yes, I enjoy referencing my own games. Followed by d6, knight bd7, etc. In both cases, he would have better equalizing prospects than in the actual game. Signed, yours truly, Alexander Alekhine. <laughs> he isn't this is a joke oh my goodness whoa whoa Polko that was dark that was really dark that was so dark I don't know what to say not really I don't have a middle name I'm sorry if it makes you feel any better I my middle name is Nikki Alakine middle game play, okay, is is awesome. <laughs> well, all right, let's continue. Bishop takes d2. And it's weird because um, he previously mentioned that with a move by like playing bishop d2 himself, the bishop would have been retreated to e7. Why would he give up the bishop for the knight? And here, after queen takes bishop, probably wanting to put the bishop on the long diagonal instead of diagonal instead of taking with the bishop and putting it on c3 here. So here we have the bishop pair. And now we see that white has the bishop pair versus just a knight and bishop. If we look at all the minor pieces, they both have three minor pieces. But here white has the advantage of two bishops working together. And beats your checkers, right? Andre! <laughs> I know so many Andres in South Africa. I always thought Screws' surname was Seven and his middle name Zero. Could work. Could work. Is your second name, is your middle name uh, Two and your last name Seven? I knew it. I knew it. Are you guys family? You must be family. Three games in a row, but the last game was my favorite was down a piece early then trapped his knight ended with him having a oh hectic okay you're welcome not cool that's really sweet of you to say okay so after queen takes d2 the correct recapture as the queen's bishop <laughs> bishop is wanted on the long diagonal right so he wants us he wants to play bishop to b2 let's get the hand back Okay, then we have d6 on the board, b3, knight b7. But what I suppose makes me a little confused is why didn't he take with the bishop and play bishop c3? Um, 
Probably the bishop is safe on b2, although now black can play a5, a4. I suppose queen d2 just helps with development in turn. So we have bishop b2 and rook b8. And what I really like about this strong bishop on the diagonal is at any point when this diagonal starts to weaken in any way, if the knight moves and we push the pawn to d5, we can simply put our queen on the diagonal in front of that bishop and try to aim towards the king. That g7 square is going to be so weak later on. So we can play something like queen g5 or queen c3, not right now, but at some point we could play that. And at the same time, when we do get d5 in, which I'm sure he will try to, then we can just close this diagonal for this bishop to become weak. All about the prophylaxis, you know what I mean. And here we have another note by Alexander Alekhine. Black shows his hand decidingly too early. The obvious object, the obvious object of the text moves to play knight e4 followed by f5, for which purpose the bishop must be protected. To avoid the possible answer, knight g5. But the same idea could have been combined with the mobilization by queen e7, rook a d8, and eventually bishop a8. And there we have the Retty maneuver. Was Retty alive at that time? Queen e7, rook a d8, bishop a8. Ah, oh, bishop a8, just reserving the bishop probably. Not sure. Goodness, Cappy, that's even darker. I don't know what to do with Twitch chat anymore. I'm gonna crumple it up like a piece of paper. My goodness. I'm very, very confused, Polko and Cappy. You can't spell retired without Retty. 1889 to 1928. Thanks, Glamdrang. I looked it up for you. You're amazing. Thank you. And this game was played in 1936. So maybe he was going for that. <laughs> oh, it's late night in India. It's probably like 2 a.m. for you. I'm trying to think about the time difference. Uh, three and a half hours, probably, right? He called 10 years... Guys, stop it. What are you doing in the chat? You're making me sad. <laughs> Alrighty. Inside about the bishop pair here. Alrighty. Well, you want to watch YouTube videos the whole stream? We could have a watch party. Rook A to D1. And we have an exclamation point. An interesting and effective method of meeting Black's plan. The white queen bishop is to play in the following development the most important and practical decisive part. I'm not used to this kind of English. All right. So rook b8 apparently showed all, all these cards. So instead of keeping them a secret, um, it's like folding, but showing your cards is like, this is what I'm folding right now. Deal with it. <laughs> Sarah, what's up? Excited for next week, Sarah? Hey, Daniel West. You watch funny on YouTube, Sammy. <laughs> wow. That's funny. You're very late, Sarah. I think we've been live for 45 minutes already. <laughs> Sarah's here. All right. Oh, screws. Come on. Come on. And we have knight e4 in response to this rook d1. If queen e7, then queen e3, knight e4, d5. So that would have been domination of the dark squares, I'm assuming. Yeah, queen e7, then queen e3. Knight e4, d5. Okay, fair enough. Queen e3, f5, d5. And there we have blocked out the bishop. We have anticipated this beautiful d5 move. The pawn will only apparently be weak, as white can always protect it by counterattack. Alrighty then. E takes d5, c takes d5, and knight d to f6, knight to h4, and queen to d7. So we were putting pressure on the f5 pawn, and they've defended with this queen move. Bishop h3 is beautiful. Is beautiful. 
Excuse me, so there's a comment here that queen d7, if knight takes d5 instead. So let's go back, see if we can edit this position. If knight takes d5, then there's rook takes d5. Beautiful exchange, sacrifice, takes, and queen d4, what we were saying earlier. So we're attacking here on g7, we're attacking the bishop, beautiful double attack. So we get two minor pieces for rook and a pawn, and it's not equal because you need a rook and two pawns to be equal. Um, two minor pieces are just so powerful. Overpowering. OP. You have queen d7, bishop h3. Again, preventing knight takes d d5. This time because queen takes e4. <gasps> Lovely. So they're saying this is possible now. And you won't take the knight because after takes, 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 the queen is defending on g7. So this is winning for black. But if we go back a little bit, not this move, before this, now if knight takes d5, it's losing because of queen takes e4. And if you take, you win the queen. Beautiful. It's gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So beautiful. Takes, takes, takes. Hey, Chas Melissa, what's up? Using that Jesse flair right there. Best chef in both SA and Austria. You need to teach me how to cook, Sarah. And do dishes. <laughs> Can you teach king and pawn endgames? Even Ali Reza just now blew a drawn position. Against Magnus Carlsen in the ulti box, that's true. Unless you're talking about some other thing, then he probably really has to work on those. But yes, next week I will be giving a masterclass. And uh, the masterclass is happening on coaches.com. So if you go to coaches.com right now, you'll see that there is half price $6. Only $6, which is about 100 Rand in my local currency. And I don't know how many uh, rupees in Indian currency. But um, there is yeah, half price $6 for one hour masterclass of a private group, group of people. We will have some fun learning about the basics of endgames. So we're going to speak about everything endgames. We're going to talk about tactical motives in the endgame. We're going to talk about uh, promoting your pawn, how to gain an advantage when you just have maybe minor pieces or a couple pawns on the board. Because... Maybe you can't checkmate, most of the time you can't checkmate with just the pawn. So we want to try and promote the pawn and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So make sure if you want to participate in next week's cool masterclass, private masterclass, then by all means go to coachess.com. And I've also posted it on all my other social media platforms. So it's hard to miss. What time is the masterclass? Midnight. My time. So that's GMT plus two midnight midnight which will probably be half past three in the morning uh for uh indian participants or um i think slightly earlier for you eu but it is um american friendly us friendly which is what they're going for want something that's a bit flexible for why six dollars your instruction is worth way more than that oh thank you screws thank you i see some Oh, it's a midi. So sweet, man. Don't miss it. <laughs> yeah, some boot camps are going for $800. Um, but that's with some international masters and so on, grandmasters. Is there a discount for world champions? Yes, it's 50 off for everyone. $6. Why is that? Why that's a real steal? <laughs> it's about the price of a sandwich. Get out of here, Gappy. <laughs> Is it this week or next week? It's next week, so it's on the 14th. I think next week's the 14th. Just add 14th? No, it's not 14th. Let me check. 11th. My bad! I thought it was the... Okay, 11th. My bad. Sorry, I was thinking about something else. Is it the masterclass accessible to people who are terrible at <laughs> It's accessible to everyone. Everyone's going to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Err, uh, Wednesday. Yes. Jesse, after dark, it'll be a talk show. I will go on for an hour. Um, but it will be, I think, a very similar situation to this. So we will be able to speak 
uh, to each other. You'll be chatting to me. I'll be answering your questions. It might even go over an hour if that's not a problem with you. But I think there's just so much ground to cover that we will just have so much to talk about. And that'll be amazing. Um, what's the cut for coaches? <laughs> Why are you asking these questions? Oh, I, I don't think... I don't think I get paid per person. It doesn't work like that. It's more like a, a fixed thing. <laughs> but the more the merrier. I really enjoy a good company. 11th glam drawing, yes. Will we understand even if we don't speak English? You want me to speak Spanish? No, no hablo español. Non parlo de italiano. Ik praat no Afrikaans. Ich kann kein Deutsch sprechen. <laughs> Pass one, what's up? Where's the link for it? There we go, there we go. Giant Pixels has the link right there for you. Never mind my chubby cheeks in that link, please excuse it. <laughs> fact check, it's important these days. What we'll understand, just fact checking, right, right, right. Send us the link. All right, I'll send the link in the YouTube chat as well. Um, there we go, six. Dollars is a real steal. There we go, guys. I've sent it in the chat under Jesse February. You'll see over there. There we go. Alrighty, so we have F3 on the board. We have to continue with the game just in time uh, to end of the stream beautifully here. So we have Knight to F5. I just need to remember to stop at move 21 to give you that problem to solve. Knight C5, Queen to G5. Look at those dark squares, they're completely weak. And why do I say the dark squares are weak? Is because those pawns are kind of locked on light squares right now. And at some point, our bishop will just be too overpowered to stop. And probably we'll want to get more um, minor pieces involved. So something like knight g6 will be on the table. Something like bishop takes f5 is definitely something we can take a look at immediately. Nervous though, why would you be nervous? Never be nervous. Okay, threatening not only bishop takes f6, like I said. Ah, bishop f6 is something else, right? But also bishop or knight takes f5. And if knight takes d5, then knight g6 wins. Ooh, this is nice. So if knight takes over here, we have knight takes g6. And after pawn takes g6, queen takes g6, and it's mate. There's no queen g7 because of the bishop on b2. Again, we see the beautiful power of this bishop pair, or just the bishop itself is amazing queen g7 is a great defense this is why you should never go pawn hunting guys pawn hunting <laughs> what we're not on video ourselves certainly as far as i'm aware yeah it's literally just this format unless of course i say you switch on your camera then you have to switch your camera on and look me dead in the eye no, i'm joking you don't have to do that <laughs> oh don't feel pre peer pressured though, although it would be amazing to have you um, in the <laughs> in the masterclass. Do you think Rebecca will give me a chess lesson for free? Sarah, I think Rebecca rarely does want to give you a chess lesson. I'm pretty sure she's offered you many, many uh, times before. Like she's offered a chess lesson to you. She's offered to help you on stream as well. Probably you were not keen about the on stream stuff, but she really wants to help you. Even Rebecca was like, I'm going to book. I want, I kind of want to book a free trial with you, Jesse, to just see what kind of coaching you do. It was laughing so hard. Imagine Rebecca getting coaching from me. <laughs> what is pawn hunting? So it means that you're just grabbing all the pawns you think are free or pieces you think are hanging because not all, not all um, hanging pieces are free. They do appear free, but it could land you in danger. It could just be bait, right? I will make you a sandwich. You'll make me a sandwich? <gasps> no one's ever said something so nice to me before. Thank you. I'll accept a sandwich from you. Depends on what's on the sandwich, though. Oh my gosh. You're fighting over who's worse? You're going to join to me, G? That's amazing. Don't say that you're the worst chess player in the world. Come on, guys. It's going to be really a lot of fun. I'm willing to do that for free. <laughs> if I could give away free tickets to the masterclass, I would. Um, but unfortunately, I can't. 
Hashtag, what? What, Rebecca is here? Rebecca is in the chat, guys. What? Shall we tell her it's really me being offered the sandwich? It's okay, Rebecca, I understand. Everyone say hello to Rebecca. Okay, so we have queen to g7, b4 attacking the knight, and the knight goes, drops back. I wouldn't really understand why we're attacking the knight. Probably there's some motive, but here the knight just comes back towards the king side and defends. <laughs> Only legs on stream, no faces. <laughs> Professional actor confirmed. What do you mean? Sammy, what do you mean? Beck, beck. Okay, so we have e4 on the board. Look at that. Initially, ah, the initial move of the decisive sacrificial combination. And that gives away a lot because the next move is move 21. And after knight takes e4, I believe, it begins. Wait, what? Can you guys guess the next move? Can you guess the next move? This is my question. Can you guess the next move while I catch up in chat? <laughs> Shirov was the modern day equivalent of Alakine. Doesn't Shirov still play? You're doing end ending streams, more games there. Well, we'll be speaking about a lot of end game positions. We won't be going through a lot of games because that usually wastes a bit of time in the beginning. Um, so what I'm just going to do is take um, a position either from an endgame book or some endgame manual and we'll go through that. And I have a lot of um, endgame resources that I use. So I think it's going to be well prepared. And even after the lesson, what I can do is if you guys give me your email addresses or the way you sign up, I'll try to find out if there's a way I can contact you all in one go. And I can send you some material straight after the lesson too. Which is what I'm hoping to do. But if I don't, if you know, don't get any uh, extra work, you can always reach out to me. I always, always have work. Tell me, let's do it. Can stream it for the world to see. What? Wait, 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 what? what? Oh my goodness, you guys have to... <gasps> Can you battle on hashtag chess? That would be amazing. Timmy G versus JR Keel. That would be an amazing showdown, I think. Amazing showdown. <laughs> Sarah, no, don't do it. Your your email address is info at magnuscarlson.com. Got it. Wow. Fubby at carawana.com. Come on, guys the worst it won't be bishop takes g7 because if bishop takes g7 then knight takes g5 knight takes g5 so you want to save both parties here no you can't screw it doesn't work like that you can't click clip on this channel it's not allowed Okay, at which level will the lesson be at in terms of Sulman's complete endgame? Yeah, so I was actually going to be making reference to that book in the lecture itself. So if you've read the book and you're up to about 1400, then probably you don't need the class, but you're more than welcome to stop by. Then probably I will stop at like 1400. I will take some from every level. Probably nothing past 1600, to be honest with you. Nothing past 1600. Both parties here. That is a dangerous to say in the middle of the... Oh dear, someone's gone political. We don't want to go political. A different type of sub battle. Because <laughs> the, the subs are battling each other. Makes sense. From the same channel too. I was almost going to buy this book yesterday. If you need the book, just ask me. I can send it to you. I have the PDF, but probably paperback is better if you want to like literally sit down and, and work through it. I prefer paperback any day. But don't buy the PDF. What screws? Why do you do this? No one's guessing the move. Okay, so the move is, drum roll. 
Oh no, I'm a 1700. Then I'm going to have to give you a separate advanced class for six dollars. Queen c1. Queen c1 both saves the queen and saves the bishop, the only square that saves both pieces. And this one is much more effective than e f takes e4, queen takes b2, e takes f5, and queen f6, yielding white only a possible win after laborious. These words, laborious endgame. My goodness me. Such profound English was used on this day. Knight back, and bishop takes f5. Bam. The surprising sequel to e4. After g takes f5, knight takes f5, black would either lose his queen or be mated. And he didn't want to be mated today or tomorrow. Bishop e6. At last, the deep one is definitely safe. And we have bishop a6 attacking the rook. A cheeky little rook attack. A snaky angled rook attack. <laughs> rook f to e1, just putting the rook on the open file. A knight to e5, covering the open file. f4, a far simplest way to force resignation. Knight d3, just throwing in the kitchen sink by black. Rook takes d3, bishop takes d3. And, of course, the finishing move. Can we guess what it is? Where's the pressure? What are we aiming towards? It's not one of, this is another one of those underwhelming positions that Screws loves. So let's guess what it is. Oh no, what happened? What happened? Can you do some lessons aimed for 2800 plus two? I mean, that's a different ballpark, right? You're going to need um, me to put my thinking cap on and you need to book um, a one-on-one -on -one lesson for that, unfortunately. I would need a new bookshelf if I bought the paperbacks. I mean, as a proofreader, I should assume you have a whole library, right? <laughs> oh, a withdrawing move. Wait, what? Wait, are you reading a script someone else wrote? No. I was just speaking. Oh, from the quotes. Okay, there's like one line quotes or something. Laborious. Laborious, not laborious. Got it. Thanks, Mr. Proofreader. <laughs> I think Rebecca writes Jesse's scripts for Coach's lectures. <gasps> you guys say such poggers things. That makes me do the poggers face every single time. Every single time. It shocks me. How do you come up with this stuff? So many books, more than half of them are just in boxes in my car. What? How? Why? Why do you treat your books like that? Queen C1 was a withdrawing move. I was looking for an aggressive. Yeah, my one was aggressive enough, I think, because you're, you're still attacking the queen. Your stream is on. Oh, wow. Eccentric horse. Goodness me. I think eccentric horse is actually magnet. <laughs> ah, lol, Sarah, lol. Something more worthwhile, worthwhile than marketing. Uh, Y'all gonna find the move or not? Knight g6 is not it. G4 is right. Well done, actually. So G4 is right. G4 aims towards playing g5 and that is unstoppable there is no way that black will be able to stop this move because the bishop's putting such immense pressure on this diagonal there's no way to stop this beautiful beautiful move and now it says there is no remedy against g5 this game won the special prize for the most brilliant king's brilliant kingside attack at nottingham 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 and Black resigns in this position, and what a glorious game by Alexander Alekhine versus Alex. It's too small <laughs> for the books. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Alrighty. But I, I like the, is is it... Is, is it do you live in some lego do, do you live in a lego apartment is it made out of legos 
<laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for being here today. It was such a pleasure being able to talk to you about Bishop Pairs. Probably we could have gone in depth and more Bishop Game, a uh, Bishop Pair end games. But here we've seen just the how powerful bishops can be and what drew, drew me to this game. Oh, my English definitely needs to take a nap, I think. Um, what drew me towards this game was definitely the fact that um, this game had annotations and the way Adekine was kind of speaking about the old notation as well, like uh, the king's bishop reminded me a little bit of some old notation books that I have on my shelves because usually a lot of the paperback books I get through like antique stores and people calling me saying, oh, do you want this book? And that's, I, I'm a book collector, I'm a chess book collector. I don't spend um, heaps and heaps amounts of money on new chess books, but when I do see a new chess book that I want, then I invest, surely. Uh, sure. But uh, that aside, guys, it was such a pleasure being here with you. And I will see you very soon. I think my next lecture is going to be next week, Monday evening. And uh, I'll see you then. And then after that, Wednesday. So you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of me in the next week or two weeks. Because there's another masterclass a week after that. And hopefully it will make it a thing. See you guys very soon.